Hello everybody, my name is Cody Spurlock and today we're going to be talking about the Super Bowl. I'm here joined by Cam Cornelius and Alex King. And uh, unfortunately Riley Bronner could not make us, so uh, Alex here stepped up. Um, but you know, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Looking at the Super Bowl, I got two words on my mind. Run game. Thoughts? I agree. I mean, we're going to see a lot of a lot of CMC running the ball. I mean, probably going to have at least 50 rushing yards, maybe a couple touchdowns. And, I mean, Patrick's going to have to be rushing a lot. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how the run game, you know, kind of carries out the the game because, obviously, the Chiefs' defense is looking better than it ever has. I mean, really. I mean, it's definitely the best they've had in the last seven, eight years. So I think it'll be interesting to see how they can try to slow down Christian McCaffrey and see how that will open up the run game or the, the the pass for the 49ers. So so I said run game, and I think you guys maybe misunderstood what I was saying. Um, I don't think the 49ers have it in them. I think CMC is the most overrated running back in the league. Uh, wow. I, I think that that's kind of a common theme with the 49ers. Uh, and so, you know, as for the Chiefs being able to stop them, you know, they were able to stop actual running teams like, you know, the Bills and the Ravens. So I'm not worried at all. Uh, but, I think I think that the Chiefs have, have like you said, a, a solid defense that, you know, you know, CMC is just kind of a fraud. The, the thing about CMC, though, is he's, he's a receiving back, too. Like, they don't – he's not just taking handoffs. He's getting – they're airing out to him sometimes. Yeah, I also think – Calling him a fraud is pretty far. I would, maybe Brock Purdy, I could see that a little bit with him being a systematic quarterback in that system. But see, he, I, I'm gonna have to disagree already with you. I don't think really? Brock. I think Brock Purdy is probably, you know, second best player on the 49ers. Well, I mean, whenever you have the roster that he does, I mean, it's pretty hard to be a subpar quarterback. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you got what Nick yeah. Bosa. Who I would say edges out. That, that's on the defense. I think the on players. offense, he he's he is the offense. Brock Purdy, he gets really? called a game manager a lot and a system quarterback. Brock Purdy, I think, has showed that you know he's going to be he's going to be in, in the discussion for for best quarterback in the league for for years to come. Yeah, I mean, you look at what he's done compared to what you know the NFL's golden boy Mahomes has done and the past and his first two years. I'm I'm seeing you know a lot of similarities here. Yeah, I see where you're coming from that, but also you got to think he's got Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey all to throw to. And and Mahomes and got, had Travis Kelsey, one of the best tight ends of all time, and yeah. Tyreek Hill, the fastest receiver uh, in the league at the time. I mean, I mean his first two years. I mean, that, that's with, fair, with but Chris Jones on defense and at Frank Clark. I mean, you you can't tell me that that Mahomes didn't benefit from having some of the best weapons. Not to mention, you know, Big Red. I think. So. I think the problem is though we don't see we don't see Brock Purdy's arm very often. We see a lot of checkdowns with him, kind of like Brady. Kind of like how Brady threw a lot of checkdowns in his career. I haven't really seen very many like big Brock Purdy plays. And well, I mean, if you look at it, like if you're looking at it at a stat level, Purdy almost leads the NFL in, in air yards specifically. Yeah. So you know, you you can talk about checkdowns, but the ball is in the air for for longer distances than almost anyone else. And and you know, let, let's be real, Mahomes might be another Cam Newton situation. I think that he's regressed yeah. a lot. And I'm not sure if he has it in him to keep going. The I think a big reason due to you feeling like he may be regressing is because of the lack of receiver play. Like up until the playoffs, they haven't had anybody step up and go and catch a ball and win a game for him. Because when you look at it, the Chiefs are seven, eight plays away from being fifteen and two. Really, I just I don't know if I see it right. The the Chiefs have had every reason to do well this year. Um, I mean. They they were able to win without a without Tyreek Hill last year and Juju Smith Schuster, you you can't bring, like he was not the offense last year like he he was was he productive sure but you know I'm looking coming into this year, you, you still have a lot of the same players and yeah, and you have players that you I I feel like no matter how you really break it down Mahomes has had his worst year and so he's on this is. Uh, been been carried by you know 
you know, the genius of Andy Reid in the past few games and, and then and been carried by by a defense that, that you know, turns the turns the ball over quite a quite a bit. So, you know, I, I don't know. You know, Patrick Mahomes is on this weird, weird level right now to where I'm I'm a little worried for how he's going to do. Like I think this is you know, this might be a career game for him. This yeah. might mark a shift. If he loses this, I'm not you know, things I don't know if things are gonna be looking up for the Chiefs in the next few years, especially when Travis Kelsey is already up there in age. I mean, you look at Travis Kelsey, he's the same age as Gronk. Uh, and and Gronk's out of the league. Yeah, he only um, probably has a couple years left. So yeah. Travis, you know, will decline this year from Kelsey. That's why I feel like Mahomes is kind of. That's why his numbers are down, and he might not be having the greatest year because doesn't have a star receiver, and Travis Kelsey's kind of you know fading. It is also yeah. kind of interesting to see Mahomes having his most interceptions in a year. Yeah, he has been throwing a lot of passes that just. I mean, some, yeah, are by the receivers, but some are just kind of god-awful passes looking yeah. back at them. And at the end of the day, it's an interception. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I, I will say, like, you know, that's kind of what I'm saying with the receivers is it's – you can always throw a better ball. I mean, and, you know, sometimes drops just happen. Yeah. But he has he has guys out there who, who's proven that they can't catch. I mean, yeah. uh, MVS, who led the, led the league in, in drops – just caught the game, caught the game winner, you know, against against the Ravens. But you know, looking looking a little bit away from you know what uh, the Chiefs are looking like this year, you know, this Super Bowl specifically, uh, I think it, it's a big one, and it's a big one because it marks a lot of things for Dynasty. for uh, it can be for the Chiefs and for the Niners, yeah. right? Four years ago, what were we looking at? Same Chiefs thing. Niners. Chiefs Niners and Mahomes. Uh, you know, Mahomes came out and he came out to play back, uh, you know, back in the 2019. Yeah, 2019, 20. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if the same thing, if he if he comes back, 49ers, how he kind of had the dynasty kind of, you know, started, right? Um, and he wins this one. I'm, I'm going to have to shut up, right? I'm going to have to stop talking about it. Mahomes being washed, about about the, the, the Chiefs being carried by certain things. But if it doesn't happen... You know that's that's another Super Bowl loss, yeah. Uh, and he can add that Super Bowl loss to, um, you know, the the loss against Tampa, which it was another big career um, yeah. loss for Patrick Mahomes. And so, you know, I think when we talk about the goat debate that is going to keep happening with Mahomes and Brady, um, as much as we, you know, as much as a lot of people don't want to talk about it, it's going to get talked about. Yeah. And until Mahomes finally stops, uh, you know. Doing the things he he's been doing, the goat debate has to happen. Um, but if he if he wins this one, it's going to keep him in the race. I think yeah. keep him there. If he loses it, it's going to be a bit harder yeah. to to keep having that that conversation. Um, but then you know we also look at is Brock Purdy a fraud or not? If Brock Which, Purdy wins this one, I don't think we would call him a fraud. You know, I think he kind of yeah, proves I'm, he proves that he's he's legit. I think it really depends on how they win, though, because if they hold, True. if they hold the Chiefs to below, let's say twenty-one, they hold them below twenty. I think that's a defensive win for them. I because think, I think that's the only way they're gonna win if they yeah. hold the Chiefs down. Because I don't think, as much as I like watching Brock Purdy, I just don't think they're gonna be able to outscore the Chiefs. I think it's yeah. really got to be a defensive game for them. And expect, the Forty ers haven't looked. I mean, they obviously they're in the Super Bowl, and you got to win to do that. But I mean, it hasn't been pretty winning by any means. I mean. Yeah, talking about a close game with the Lions, and then obviously that uh, regular season game against the Ravens, that was kind of a yeah. The, oh, the, these guys may not if they don't come to play, they're going to get waxed. The the Forty ers have proved that they can win, and they can win win by a lot. Yeah. But they've also proven the exact opposite can't be true. You know, uh, they they've kind of struggled against some higher power offenses this year, um, and. You know, obviously this isn't the most uh, high power this offense is the the Chiefs offense has been, but you know you're going up against Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes and Travis they're, Kelsey. They're they're red hot right now. Yeah, I mean you you're, you're coming into a game that it, it means a lot for the Niners because you know the Niners hasn't haven't been you know ha- haven't won a Super Bowl in, in quite some time, and they've always it feels like every year they're they're in the conversation. And even they're the favorites sometimes. And yeah. they, they got up uh, four years ago. They were up in the game. Um, they even started celebrating, you know. And then 
because they got that. Mm. I think it was a pick. I think yeah, with like some a couple minutes left, and the Chiefs ended up coming back and win. And, and yeah, and so you know the the Chiefs have proven that you know it doesn't really matter what Vegas thinks. Yeah. It doesn't matter who who the favorite is. You know. Uh, but then we can get into the, you know, the part of the conversation is, you know, the refing and the officiating, yeah. which kind of has to come up whenever you talk about the Chiefs. Um, what, are, what are you guys' thoughts on, on the... Uh, I mean, if you go back and look at some of the games, there's, there's going to be a lot of calls that you're going to see that should be called and shouldn't be called. It's just officiating. But when you go look at yards that the Chiefs have gone off of it, it's substantially larger than any other team. Yeah. I, I think that... A big reason for some of the arguments about officiating, though, is just there's we, we they, they need a reason. Yeah. You know, you got, you need something to you like you know we lost because of, of this, but you like you, you look at the AFC title game, which you know I I watch I watch the AFC AFC game, and and while watching it, I'm thinking you know some calls that should have been made on both sides, but yeah, then that's how it's always going to be. Like but that. then I I look at it and. The refs didn't fumble in the end zone, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They they didn't they didn't make Lamar Jackson yeah. throw a throw a pick into triple coverage. Like at the yeah. end of the day, you can you can say what you want about it officiating, um, but te- teams kind of just need an excuse at this yeah. point. The, the the Ravens lost. The officials didn't help. The, didn't make the Chiefs win. And then you know we talk about some of the officiating. Uh, it's kind of hurting the Chiefs right now, specifically on the offsen- offensive side of the ball. The when you look at the line, yeah, the line we have just... the most flagged left tackle yeah. in football right now. That is going to be that's going to be huge, yeah. um, it, it, because they're looking for it. Uh, a lot of guys don't get a lot of uh, don't get calls called on them because you know they don't have a history of it. Yeah. Um, you look at you look at the the Chiefs at line. Um, Specifically, our left tackle position. He, he he's a holder, and and refs look for it, and they're they're more willing to call holding yeah. on things like that. Uh, same thing kind of goes for you know Odell Beckham Jr. I, I think that if you look at Odell, uh, a lot of a lot of his tape, um, he tries to call he tries to to draw in pass interference a lot, yeah. especially when it's not there. And that's what vets are going to do though, because they they want to manipulate the calls. They want to get yeah. as many yards as they can. And and I think the the problem with OBJ doing it. Is rest know that he does it. Yeah. They they know that he does it, so they're not going to call it every time. Yeah. I think that kind of came in and played a role in the in the Ravens game. Um, but you know, looking at the Super Bowl, uh, the defensive side of the ball, I think is where the game's going to happen. Oh yeah, um, no doubt. I mean, you know, I say run game, and I I you know I came in saying CMC is overrated. I still think he's overrated, but what's not overrated is his stat line. It, it, it just unarguably he. Uh, he has the ability to make plays, um, and the Chiefs have kind of struggled uh, against against run teams a lot this year. But uh, you know, I I'm going to say something that's a little bit of hot take. Running teams can't win the Super Bowl anymore. I, I would agree with that. I mean, yeah. it's it's hard for a running team to go and dominate an actual defensive team that can do somewhat of a good rush defense. It's just one of those hard things right now, especially in the playoffs. I, I think, um, and like, like you can you can get to the playoffs being a running team for sure, but to win the Super Bowl specifically, I just don't know if I'm or I don't know if we're gonna be seeing running teams do that anymore. Yeah, and I mean with the 49ers, I mean because like you know CMC, like I said, he's not only a runner but he's a receiver, and so he's gonna dominate the game wherever the holes open up for him. If the 49ers can get stuff going with the passing game to Samuel and Ayuk, I feel like. It's going to open up the run, and then he's going to be able to capitalize off of the run game, and then be able to be that kind of and back that can really do it all. You you know, and and that could happen, but I I I do worry about CMC's ability to take on better uh, defenses, like some of our backfield on, on defense. I, I CMC has the ability to catch the ball, but put him up against an elite defense. Uh, especially the elite defense we're seeing um, in terms of passing for the for the Chiefs. I don't know if you you get some of the value we see from him. But I mean, he's a, I mean, he's a shifty guy. I mean, if you catch the ball in the open field, it's going to be hard to bring him down. So if they, yeah, if you get a screen pass, couple good blocks, it's going to be hard for the Chiefs to contain him because he's another thing, able to, another thing that should be talked about is is injuries coming into Super Bowl. Um, 
you, we the Chiefs just you know we lost uh, we lost a Menahue, uh, who we got from the the Niners uh, um, you know just last year and and so you know losing him on the line that's big. Uh, he's played a major role this season. Um, you know, I don't think he's completely filled the shoes of Frank Clark, but uh, his presence on the field is still undeniable. Yeah. And I think we, I think we're losing that a lot. And so, you know, the defense might come into here not looking as as strong as it has been throughout the year because it's not just a minute here. You know, our linebacking yeah. core, it's it's gone. Right, we come in with a very solid one, and now you know we're looking at the Super Bowl and. I don't know if it's there. Uh, I mean, we, we uh, it's talked about a lot, the, the battle of attrition that a lot of teams go through, especially during the playoff times. I don't know if I don't know if we have enough left in the tank. And then this 49ers, I mean, you know, we talk about some of their key players in game. Yeah. One of the, they lose one of them. Especially Debo coming yeah. off an injury just not long ago. It's just I don't be interesting. know if the Niners have the ability to uh, – you know, I don't think they had, I don't think the Niners do have the ability to to recover after losing certain members. You know, you're talking about Brock Purdy being a system quarterback. I disagree. You know who definitely was a system quarterback? Jimmy G. I mean, I think that's I think that's pretty inarguable. J- Jimmy G's system quarterback, um, and he gets hurt. Uh, you know, they kind of throw they you know they throw Brock Purdy in his place. Um, Last year, uh, I mean, if he, if he doesn't get hurt, I mean, the Niners could have. I mean, but and, and that's kind of what I I'm getting at here is like, if he doesn't get hurt, their ability to uh, their ability to to adapt um, during energy, uh, you know injuries. I don't know if I don't know if it's there. You know what do, what do you they do if they if they lose somebody like Bosa? You know what do they do if they lose uh, you know CMC during the game? I mean. He, running backs getting injured in, in big moment plays is nothing new. I mean, um, I think, you know, we look at injuries. I don't know if the 49ers have the ability to adapt. Uh, something that probably needs to be a, a kept an eye on during uh, the Super Bowl, especially um, considering, you know, Las Vegas Stadium, uh, which has, you know, one thing I think is kind of funny. Hopefully Mahomes stays healthy too, though, yeah. because we've seen him take a couple big hits. I mean, one of them even cracking his helmet during when it was cold. Yeah, that was yeah. a scary hit. I mean, and then just seeing him body twisted up. Good thing he does all those pre-game stretches and has those people that are out there helping him every time. Yeah, um, especially you know we saw last year Mahomes play during last year's Super Bowl was. Um, it was good quarterback play, but it wasn't elite quarterback yeah. play. Um, and, and I think a lot of that's attributed to, to some of the inner, and, and, you know in, injuries that, that he he had. And uh, if that comes back to haunt him, uh, you know I question the Chiefs' ability to you know compete without uh, without a healthy Mahomes. Um, you know that that's kind of an advantage the 49ers have. Niners lose Brock Purdy. Next guy mentality: feed the ball to CMC, yeah. right? Chiefs lose Mahomes. Scary story. What do we do? You yeah. know, uh, but I mean, I feel like they can go both ways with their team. Because I mean, obviously, if you lose somebody big, it's kind of like that's going to be depending on that. If it's like first half, I mean, that's big. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, you have halftime to kind of you know adjust, get next guy ready. But I mean, obviously, you never want to see it happen. But I mean, and, and, and another thing. Season. Should be that uh, should be talked about is how much money the 49ers are spending on the team they have now. Um, you know they they've their their cap penalties are going to be crazy uh, without some restructuring in these next few years. And so I feel like if they have this team that they have now with four or five future Hall of Famers on it, um, they're and, and they don't win a Super Bowl with it. When will they? You yeah. know. If, if they if they don't win with this team, what team can they win with? It if you have you know CMC, you have uh, Kittle, uh, you know you have all of, all of these guys. Um, Nico Samuel, yeah, Trent Williams, Fred Warner, and and you can't win with them, then who can you win with? And and then you're gonna have to start asking: Is Shanahan, is he that guy? Is he? I mean. We talk a lot of props are given to his offense, but at the end of the day, you know I could win with CMC uh, with, with those guys. You know I'm gonna I'm gonna beat yeah. some of these other teams, and and so uh, 
you know, <coughs> some coaching questions, I think, might have to be called if, if they can't get the job done here, um, especially when you're looking at the field of open coaches. Uh, you have Bill Belichick, uh, Pete Carroll. Um, is Harbaugh still on the market? Uh, I mean, no, I think, you have, I think the Chargers picked them. Chargers picked them. Yeah. yeah, so you have you, – but you still have some of these all-time greats. And, and you know, Bill Belichick's b- biggest uh, criticism is, you know, he can't – Win without Brady. He, he can't yeah, win without Brady. I think that's becoming more obvious and obvious. I think, I, and you know, I think that's fair, but, you know, maybe he can't win without Brady, but but maybe he can win if you still give him an elite team. Yeah. And the Niners well, are I mean, an elite team. If, I think that just comes down to if you're a good coach or not, if you have an elite team, you should win games. I think, yeah. I think I want to see him go to another team and see how he does. I just want to really know whether it was Brady or if it was him. Yeah, and... From where I'm, where I'm at right now, I feel like it was definitely Brady because you know Brady won all those Super Bowls in New England, and he went in to Tampa, and obviously won a Super Bowl. And then Belichick had one decent year with Mac Jones, and then they've kind of been, you know. But to be years. fair, Brady brought Belichick with into Tampa. Yeah. It, like let's be let's be honest for a second. I mean, the the style of play that Tampa played, it was it was the same style of play they played. And, and New England. I mean, it's also you know Tom Brady didn't come over alone. It's not yeah. like he just I mean, went to Tampa. Yeah. He brought he brought Gronk with them. But yeah, Gronk had been retired, and and, and, he, and he came out. And I mean, he wasn't the dominant force that he necessarily was in years past. But I mean, it definitely <clears throat> excuse me helped. And, and you know that's definitely fair. But you know at the same time, uh, they they have you know the 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 best quarterback of all time. Coming in to Tampa with, at that point of time, I will say the best, uh, the, the second best tight end of all time. And that's just my personal ratings, but you know, one of the best of all times coming in. And so, you know, it's with, with some of the Belichick principles that they learned throughout the way. So, you know, it's hard to separate Brady's career from Belichick when, um, you know, Brady played with him for so long. But, but when you look at Belichick, and specifically how he might play a role with the Niners is you give Belichick another elite team. He's already proven that if you give him greats, he can use them. And Shanahan has has doesn't have a Super Bowl win, I, even when he was coaching for the Falcons. Granted, he is young, but, I mean, he's been considered one of the greatest offensive minds, of, I mean, offensive coordinators, I mean, for a while now, and he's always been held high in that regard, but... And I think the biggest criticism that I have of Shanahan is uh, his inability to keep the pressure um, in big moments. You look at when when he was on the Falcons, gave up that lead, uh, and that was that was, yeah, was you know I mean that's just one of the worst worst losses you've seen yeah. ever. And then you know not as not as bad or even as notable of a loss I would say, but uh, the loss against the Chiefs, yeah. they were ahead. Yeah, you can't lose those. You've you got you to keep that offense drive, and you got to keep them scoring. And so, if that happens again, my question, I, I like, it's still like, what do you do to win? You, like, if you if you can't do it with them, I don't think they're going to be able to get it done. So, when we talk about what this Super Bowl means, um, if if they lose this one, I'm going to start questioning if Shanahan should come back next year. Yeah, uh, I don't think they would they would make that decision yeah. in the in the in the season, but I think questions are going to start coming up. If they can't finish here, then I don't think they're going to be able to finish. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think if if they don't win this one, I don't think they're going to be winning one. Um, and, and then for the Chiefs, uh, you know, m- they make a few moves in the off season. The Chiefs still are Super Bowl contenders next oh, yeah. year, and, and that's just the reality yeah. of Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but next, another two words that are on my mind coming into the Super Bowl is uh, uh, Taylor Swift. No. Oh. What are your guys' thoughts? See, um, I don't, you know, I don't have a problem with Taylor Swift coming. Uh, I think that it's, uh, I think it's cool that a lot of uh, younger, you know, you know, female fans are, are being attracted to the game. I mean, it's interesting because for the NFL, it's more than enough. I mean, they brought in millions of new yeah. fans. It's awesome for them. But at the same time, I feel like they overshow her. I mean, yeah, we get it; she's there, but. I mean, I think we need to kind of keep the show on her down a little bit more. Every every time Kelsey gets a catch, it shouldn't be pinned into, you know, her celebrating in the press box. I mean, you can do that every once in a while, but I mean, I mean, hey, with Jason Kelsey there, you know, maybe uh, maybe they start sharing the spotlight a little bit. We kind of saw that in the game against uh, uh, my, uh, the game against um, well, the the Bills, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
so you know things you know things happen things change but uh um you know coming in uh to the super bowl a lot is on the table here uh i you know also i would say travis kelsey wins this one best tight end of all time see i i just think that's arguable just because of the fact like yeah, he's a tight end, but like, is he a true tight end? Does he fit that category as well as what Gronk did? And you know, you. But that that also gets into like the gray lines of like, what's a true tight end? We could, and 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 you know what I think a true tight end is? Anybody who who calls himself. I, I don't I like. It, I, I don't really care about that distinction that much. You know, uh, sometimes laying down a block is not as valuable as catching a pass. And so if you're if you're you know play to your strengths, I don't think he's a wide receiver. I, I definitely don't think he is, um, but you know he's a he's a dominant force, and and he he has you know he, he passes some of you know Jay Rice's records, yeah. and and so you know for anybody wide receiver tight end or not, you're in a conver- you need to be in a conversation, and I don't think I don't feel comfortable enough putting him in the in the wide receiver conversation. So the tight end conversation is where you know he, he kind of is in for me, and so he wins this one. He sh- you know that's that's. Three Super Bowl rings. That's uh, many postseason records. Um, that's uh, all-time Chiefs records. That's that's um, all-time tight end records. I don't know. I, I just I don't know if Gronk has. Especially he's the same age as Gronk yeah. too. And so, and Kelsey, I think I think he has the edge right now. But I think this kind of solidifies, especially if he catches a few more touchdowns. I mean, they already surpassed Gronk Grady. Um, in terms of, of, you know, touchdowns. And so, uh, especially considering the fact that, you know, Brady even brought Gronk back, um, you know, that duo was electric, but this duo is probably the most electric duo, um, tight end uh, quarterback duo of all time. And so, I, I don't know. I feel like Travis Kelsey wins this one. I mean, Go. yeah. But, I mean, obviously, obviously longevity has a play in everything, really, and Kelsey is – you know, done that better than Gronk, but yeah. you know, Gronk was the bruiser. He's gonna go block, and then I mean, he's so big and so hard to tackle. You have guys trying to injure him intentionally, yeah. which obviously shortened his career with all the. Which I injury. think almost can be kind of down to a criticism of, of Gronk's style of play. Did it make him more? Did it make him a, a better asset on the field at the time? Yeah, but but then it depreciated his value over time. You know, Kelsey is a smart football player. He. He doesn't take unnecessary risks that Gronk obviously took, and and you know that's that's why Gronk was able to make such a name because you know let's not pretend like Gronk was only unfairly targeted. Gronk also targeted. You know yeah. he led with his helmet a few times. He he was a bit more uh, rough than than you know maybe needed to be. So you know we we look at what what it is. I I say they they win this. Kelsey scores, you know, maybe one of the, the touchdowns uh, for the Chiefs, I think. I think we also have to ask, though, if they win this, is Reed done? Does Andy Reed retire after this and just call it quits after having a really good run? Um, one you could probably consider a dynasty? He could. And that's kind of, that kind of scares me. You know, yeah, he had some health like, scares a couple of years yeah. ago. Um, I feel like he's big for the Chiefs. If they lose him, I feel like that could – that right there could take them out of Super Bowl contention for the next year. Yeah. It could. I mean, losing it a could. head coach is is going to be hard. I mean, obviously you have one of the best in the game, Patrick Mahomes, and just the well. Here's what I'm going to say: yeah. and Andy Reid leaves. Why wouldn't Kelsey? Yeah, there would be time for him too. And and so and not not only that, Chris Jones. Yeah, because Chris Jones loses. You know, he's like, oh, okay, so I lost the head the head coach lost. Our you know biggest weapon on offense uh, you know besides Mahomes uh, gone. I already am unhappy with my contract, but I still want to win rings. Um, bye. I mean, if I'm Chris Jones, I leave. You you know I there and there's team and there's teams that want him. I mean like he could go he could go several different places. Uh, but I so think like, they went. It, it Reed leaves. Kelsey leaves. I think that's going to cause a big shift. That you would know. kind of be a doomsday scenario if you're a Chiefs fan because, I mean, you're losing head coach, your tight end, your best defensive lineman, and I feel like that's a scary situation because then, yeah. you know, what's the appeal to Mahomes? Yeah. I mean, what's the, only, the appeal to the other yeah. people? What's The only thing that comes out of that is now you're going to have a bigger salary cap. You're not having to pay these guys so much True. money. Which and they could bring in new guys, yeah. but also it's just And there's kind a lot of, of receivers. 
there's a lot of receivers who look like they're on the market. Yeah. And a lot of receivers who who seem a little unhappy with where they are. You you got receivers like Odell Beckham Jr. You know, his his dad blamed that loss on Lamar. You don't go back to a team after after your dad's talking trash on Twitter. Um, you know, not only that, uh, you know, look at Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Stefan Diggs isn't happy in Buffalo. See, you look at Justin Jefferson. I I see even him as a potential guy who's like, uh, Vikings aren't going to do it. I'm an all-time talent. I need I need a quarterback who can throw it to me. Kirk Cousins injury. Yeah. I, and you know what I I'm. I'm thinking, you know, receiver, there, there's a ton of them that could, like... And, I mean, even even Jamar Chase, I mean, it seems improbable because he has Joe Burrow. I mean, yeah. arguably one of the best right now. But at the same time, I mean, if he wants to win Super Bowls, I, Joe Burrow might not be the not might not be the guy to do it. The the only the only thing I would say about Jamar Chase is his recent comments on Joe Burrow. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think Jamar Chase yeah. and Burrow have a closer relationship than, say, Diggs and, and Josh Allen. Yeah. Um, but you know, you get Mahomes an all time like you, Justin Jefferson Mahomes. That's all. What do you do? You see, I you, mean, you, come you brought on. up you brought up you Odell, up. and I mean, I don't think Odell's the best get for the Chiefs right now because I mean, in that Super Bowl with Rams and Bengals, obviously he was a major factor in that while he was still before he got injured. Yeah. But the st- the amount of attention he brings to the team is obvious. But then also the negativity, like you say, blaming. Yeah. Lamar Jackson for that loss. I mean, that's just it creates a bad locker room, and you can't win with a bad locker and, room. And I agree. And I think Odell Beckham Jr. kind of he's a little over. I mean, he's overrated. Let's be yeah. real. He he he's, he's he has that big catch. He's, and a, he's a ball player. I mean, he's gonna go yeah. out and he's gonna if he's feeling himself. He's gonna go and be a top receiver. Yeah. But also, whenever he gets in his head and lets yeah. other things affect him and. And, and a, a, a toxic locker room kills. And Mahomes, uh, you know, he's been frustrated this year. Yeah. I don't think Mahomes would accept, a, a, you know, some guy coming onto his team. You, you can't um, have and, your... and it, like, you know, I, I don't, I don't see that happening. Uh, so you know, we look at, you know, we look at what could be, um, uh, depending on the Super Bowl matchups. But uh, you know, even if they leave, free, free up a lot of cap, ca- you know, cap space. But I think. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, you put him anywhere, he's going to win football games. Uh, yeah. So, I don't. I'm not as worried about the Chiefs' future. Um, I am a little worried about about the Niners. Uh, so I'm going to kind of wrap this up. What are your guys' score predictions, Camden? Uh, I think it's going to be not really a shootout, but I'm going to have 31 to 28. But I'm going to go with San Francisco winning it. Yeah, I was going to have about the same score as Camden, but I think. I think the Chiefs are going to win because, I mean, the Niners are looking shaky, like I said, and I think the Chiefs are hot, and it's it's going to be a good game, but I think in the end the Chiefs are going to pull it out. And But I, th- I think it'll be a really good game, and it's definitely a legacy game for both teams. It will define defining moments in each team's franchise, and without a doubt. So I personally, I think I have a little bit more faith in their in the defenses here. I'm gonna go 24-21, Butker with the game winner. Really? That's I think that's gonna be mine. Uh, so you know you look at it, and we didn't talk a lot about Butker, but he's he's a stud. Yeah, yeah. I mean he's a, he's a he's a stud. Really reliable kicker, always yeah. has been. Um, probably send it send it off. Uh, that that's just my predictions. Um, you know, you guys go ahead, let us know your predictions for the Super Bowl, um, and then. Uh, you know, we'll see which one of us looks like idiots and which one of us, uh, <laughs> which one of us, you know, you know, maybe, uh, maybe knows what they're talking about. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Alex, for coming in um, on, on short notice, and thank you, Cam, for agreeing to do this. Thank uh, you, Cody. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and you know continue a few uh, other spotlight episodes um, tomorrow, um, but we're also going to kind of start shifting away to a few other conversations. Um, we. If you have any suggestions for conversation topics, or if you'd even like to be featured on today's show, uh, you know, go ahead and leave a comment or, or contact me any way you guys know how. So uh, uh, thank you all for listening. Um, you know, and that ends my time, and I'd like to thank you guys for yours.